Hello everyone and welcome back once again to another fruitful discussion on the subject science, technology, and society. This time, we'll be talking about the topic biodiversity and healthy society. So when we talked about biodiversity, it is actually essential for all the processes that support life here on Earth, including, of course, us humans. Without a wide range of animals, plants, and microorganisms, we cannot have healthy ecosystems. And, of course, we rely on our ecosystem to uh, provide us with the air we breathe and the food that we eat. So people should value nature itself. And on this topic, we will be discussing and uh, we will be having an in-depth discussion about so many components of biodiversity and, of course, uh, the healthy society. So the first question here is, what is biodiversity? Now, according to Quinto and Nieva, biodiversity is the variety of life present in an ecosystem. Now, when we talk about biodiversity, it's all the different kinds of life you'll find in one area. Now, this includes a variety of animals, plants, fungi, and even microorganisms like bacteria, protozoa, etc. That, of course, makes the natural world. Now, biodiversity is the richness of biological vari variation. It exists at the levels of genetics, species, uh, species richness, and community diversity on landscapes and seascapes. Later on, I'll be discussing uh, these different types of biodiversity. And biodiversity is important to the survival of humans and, of course, our economy, and also uh, to all other species. Therefore, biodiversity also has inherent value. Now, uh, one sub-branch of biodiversity is actually agrobiodiversity. Now, what's the difference of agrobiodiversity to biodiversity? Now, again, biodiversity is necessary for the growth of crops. Meanwhile, agrobiodiversity is the variety and variability of animals, plants, and microorganisms at the genetic, species, and ecosystems level that sustain the ecosystem structures, functions, and processes in and around production systems, and that provide food and non-food agricultural products and became the result of this necessity. Now, I've mentioned earlier that there are three types of biodiversity, namely genetics, species, and ecosystem biodiversity. So let's discuss them one by one. Now, when we talk about, uh, let's go first to the lowest level, which is actually the genetic diversity. This is actually the foundation of the biodiversity. Now, on the genetic diversity, I want you to take note that individual variations among organisms of the same species happen in this level, okay? And as well as variation between populations that uh, due to local conditions and, of course, adaptations. Now, genetic diversity refers to individual variations among organisms. Let me magnify that. Of the same species, Okay? as well as variations between populations uh, that, uh, that is due to local conditions and adaptations. Now, these variations among individuals are passed from one generation to the next. Kaya nga nandiyan yung term na genetics. No? And when we talk about genetics on a simpler manner, now it contains or it talks about the genes. And remember, on your genes, you can find the traits, and the different characteristics of an individual. Let's say, for example, for human beings, that's where you can find the color of your eyes, the type of hair that you have, the color of your or the type of skin that you have, even your height, you no, know, uh, your intelligence. All of those are found on your genetic composition. Now, on this level, this actually causes the variations. Yung pagkakaiba iba natin. No, sa kaya nga no. Uh, human beings or, or no two individuals are alike. Kahit pasabihin natin twins pa yan, kahit pa identical twins pa yan, or kung anumang klaseng twins yan, meron at merong variation or pagkakaiba because of the genetic makeup of the organism or because of the genetic makeup of that particular individual. Now, let's move on naman sa species diversity. Sa species diversity, this uh, is a variety of species of particular uh, found in a particular region and either in an ecosystem or the entire biosphere. 
Now, I want you to take note that the species is actually the basic unit of biological classification. Now, in species diversity, this refers to the variety of species within a particular region, either in an ecosystem or the entire biosphere, as I've mentioned earlier. So, so um, let's say, for example, no, uh, merong ibat ibang klase ng uh, let's say cats, okay? May ibat ibang uh, variation or species ng cat, okay? Meron tayong aspen, meron tayong um, Persian cats, no? So those are the different species of cats. Ganon din sa dogs, di ba? Merong Siberian husky, may mga poodles. Uh, may mga pug, and etc. So, hindi porket sinabi natin cats ay pare-pareho lahat yan. And, don't, uh, and, and trivia lang, no? Um, parte ng cats ang mga lions and tigers and cheetahs. No? Even the panthers are part of the cat family. So, uh, on this particular level, the species diversity, no? ang pagkakaiba-iba nila is on the type of the species which is actually the basic unit of the biological classification. Now, usually, okay, this is used as a measure of how diverse certain uh, ecosystems are. And since the species is the basic unit of biological classification, uh, later on we'll be talking about endangered and extinct no, species. So you will be, we will be differentiating the two in a while. Now, moving on, okay, we have what we call the ecosystem diversity. Now, in the ecosystem diversity, this refers to varieties of ecosystems and the interactions of the species uh, in their ecosystem. So the variations of topographical and climatic conditions contribute to ecological diversity. Now, if you will notice, no, maraming pagkakaiba sa type of organism found on a specific ecosystem. Let's, for example, the desert. Ibang mga organisms and iba din yung type of adaptations na meron sila, particularly because organisms tend to adapt no, in the conditions of their ecosystem. Iba din ang makikita ninyo mga organisms or iba din yung characteristics na meron sa mga organisms that are found in cold areas, like for example sa Antarctic. So makikita ninyo compared to sa tropical areas like in the Philippines, uh, mas maninipis yung balat or yung hair na makikita sa mga uh, animals found in tropical areas like in the Philippines syempre napakainit no sa ating bansa for example because the Philippines is an example of a tropical country then kapag pumunta ka naman ng Antarctica na makikita niyo yung mga polar bears na ang kakapal ng kanilang mga balat yung mga wolves etc so as i've mentioned variations of topographical and climatic conditions contribute to ecological diversity even the type of plants found in those ecosystems vary because of these conditions. So those are the simplest no? uh, explanations and definitions of the three types of biodiversity. Again, the three types of biodiversity are genetic diversity, species diversity, and then we have the ecosystem diversity. Okay, now if you look at this slide, you will see no, endangered species versus threatened species. Now, let me ask you this question, and I would like you to type this on the chat box. First, I'd like you to differentiate what's endangered species from threatened species. Okay, I'll be reading your answers in the comment section. So, please, pakisagot yun. That's the first question. Again, uh, what is the difference between endangered species and threatened species? Okay, now using those definitions, the second question is, alin sa tingin ninyo ang endangered at alin sa tingin ninyo ang threatened sa pictures na makikita nyo sa screen? Uh, is it, uh, ang endangered ba ay ang Philippine eagle or ang Philippine bat? Okay, or ang threatened ba ay si Philippine eagle or sa Philippine bat? Okay, so I'll give you a moment to answer that question. Okay, moving on. So, what's the difference between endangered species from threatened species? Pag sinabi natin endangered species, this means a species is in danger of extinction. Ibig sabihin, uh, uh, extinction throughout all or significant portion of its range. Okay? So, kapag endangered, 
pa-extinct na. As in, bilang na bilang na lang kung ilan ang merong uh, animal, bilang na bilang na lang no? kung ilang pa ang natitira no? sa kanilang species. So definitely, sa picture na to, ang endangered species dyan or near extinction na ay ang Philippine eagle. I am not sure of the number pero I've watched a video about the Philippine eagle and they say that uh, parang less than 50 na lang ang naiiwan na Philippine eagle. In fact, baka lesser pa ang number. So imagine niyo no, bilang na bilang na lang ang natitirang Philippine eagle. And, uh, you know, this eagles contribute a lot to our biodiversity and of course to our ecosystem. Uh, ang pagkawala ng mga hayop na kadulad ng Philippine eagle will have a massive impact or a massive contribution sa change no, sa ating ecosystem. And uh, so we really have to take care of these animals like of course the Philippine eagle. And hindi lang Philippine eagle ang malapit ng mawala or ma-extinct no, sa ating Uh, sa ating bansa, kundi maraming klase pa ng hayo. Now, for the threatened species naman, these are species that are likely to become endangered. So, papunta na sila sa endangered zone or endangered um, level uh, within foreseeable future. So, ibig sabihin ito, pag wala tayong ginawa sa pangangalaga, pagprotekta sa hayop na to, Sooner, they will be a part or they will belong to the endangered species. Ibig sabihin, uh, marapit na silang mawala. Okay, and of course, uh, sa dalawang picture na yan, ang uh, endangered or ang threatened species, I should say, ay ang Philippine bat. Again, pag sinabi natin endangered species, near extinction na lang. Ne- near extinction na. Marapit na silang mawala. Kapag threatened species naman, they are... Uh, about to join no? the endangered species kapag wala tayong ginawa. Okay. Now, according to U.S. Endangered Species Act, ito yung definition ng dalawa, just for a recap, endangered species is in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant portion of its range. And pag sinabi naman natin threatened species, those that are considered likely to become endangered in the future. Okay. So, Now, I've mentioned example na endangered species, yung Philippine eagle. Of course, isa pa yung panther, if you're familiar with that cat, yung black na, na cat. No? Um, similar to tigers and uh, uh, cheetahs, pero ang kulay nga lang niya ay black. So, endangered na rin siya. Well, threatened species, ay example nito is yung Mindanao pygmy, yung bat na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. That's actually the Mindanao pygmy fruit bat. Okay? So, endangered na siya. Right? Now, um, in order to protect our biodiversity, our ecosystem, okay, um, the United Nations crafted several protocols to call the attention of all the countries to do something uh, in, uh, in terms of protecting and, of course, taking care of our environment, of our ecosystem and biodiversity. So, ano ba yung mga threats na nagko-contribute? Or what are the threats that leads to the destruction of our biodiversity? Of course, one is of what the habitat loss and destruction. So, one major cause of the extinction of many animals is, of course, yung habitat loss. And ano ba yung mga reasons for habitat loss? Of course, nakikita niyo yung one is industrialization. Although, sabi nga natin, Uh, everything in this world has two sides. Just like a coin, meron yung two sides, my good and bad. Okay? So, although industrialization contributes to boosting our economy and, of course, improving our life, we create more technologies, we create more machines to help our lives or to make our lives better. But at what cost? Okay? And we all know that Um, yung pagtatayo ng mga iba't ibang subdivision, ng mga ibang factories, planta, and whatever uh, industrial structures and uh, uh, mechanisms or, or machineries contribute to habitat loss and destruction. We also know that you know, we utilize our natural resources. And for example, yung paggamit ng, natin ng mga papel okay? or ng iba't ibang mga construction materials, we get that from our environment, particularly sa mga puno. Okay? So, uh, every time we cut a tree, we destroy uh, not only a single life, but 
you know, it has a ripple effect. No, malaki ang epekto niyan. And, you know, uh, because of habitat loss and destruction, maraming mga hayop, maraming mga organisms ang nawawalan ng food source, nawawalan ng tirahan. And this actually leads to them being endangered. Okay? Of course, part nito is alteration in our ecosystem. Okay? Uh, as I've mentioned, um, yung pagkawala no, ng particular ecosystem, like for example, yung mga ponds, o yung mga, uh, yeah, mga ponds sa ating bansa. If you notice, no, paunti na ng paunti yung mga ponds, uh, and, and this actually leads to uh, lesser uh, amount of, uh, let's say, mga fish na, na, na kinakain natin or mga source of, of potential food para sa atin. Um, also, no, yung maraming mga palayan fields are converted into many subdivisions. And uh, because of this, not only the fields but also some mountains are converted into um, to, uh, subdivisions or areas na nagiging tirahan natin lahat because of the increase in population. So that leads to the overexploitation of our natural resources. And uh, hindi na makasabay no? yung, yung ating natural resources sa ating mga pangangailangan. One typical example dito is noon, nung kami pa yung mga bata, wow, para napakatanda ko na. No? Of course, I'm still very young. Pero when I was a child, no, yung, yung galunggong, yung gigi, was actually considered to be the fish of the masses or uh, kumbaga pang masang isda. Okay? Kumbaga, kasi napakamura nun. At syempre, napakasarap pa nun ng galunggong. Uh, Nakapag medyo toasted siya, di ba? Tapos sabayan pa ng gulay and whatsoever. Pero ngayon, mas mahal pa ang galunggong kaysa sa bangus and other types of fish. So, the over-exploitation of the food that we eat or the over-exploitation is actually caused by the changes or alteration in our ecosystem. Sabi ko nga, ripple effect yan. Kapag may nangyaring pagbabago sa isang particular part of our ecosystem, particular area of our ecosystem, magkakaroon niya ng malaking impact sa atin. Um, there are also some notable observations wherein yung mga wild animals are actually uh, kubaga, visiting many towns and cities, not only here in the Philippines, but in every part of the world. Kasi nga, wala na silang matirhan. No, like yung mga wild bears, makikita nyo pumapasok sila doon sa backyard ng mga bahay sa America and other countries or videos like that. So yung mga snakes, no, yung mga, uh, mga, mga cobra sa Pilipinas na nasa bundok, uh, ngayon nagsisipagsulputan na sa iba't ibang mga fields, sa iba't ibang mga palayan, and even sa mga kabahayan. Kasi nga, wala na silang uh, habitat, o wala na silang matirhan. And even the food source na dati ay very rich sa kanilang area, nawawala na rin kasi nga des- destroyed na yung kanilang mga habitats or natural uh, places, no? yung kanilang mga tirahan. Of course, when we have overpopulation, there's overexploitation, of course, pollution. Uh, perennial problem na yan, yung pollution. No? Air pollution, water pollution, soil pollution, as we continue to grow in number, as we uh, continue to uh, saturate the world with our pop, with our with our number, uh, makikita mo din na padami ng padami ang mga plastics, no? Padami ng padami yung mga basura that eventually has an impact to our uh, to other organisms. Like for example, yung mga nakikita natin ng mga dolphins and other sea creatures na nakakakain ng mga iba't ibang klase ng plastic, they die because of this um, this this uh, trash na tinatapon natin. Um, lahat ito ay connect-connectado. And uh, I, I know you get what I mean when you talk about pollution. Um, yung, of course, maganda yung mga advancements natin when it comes to transportation, ang daming mga cars, ang daming mga vehicles, but at what cost? Okay, and dyan yung fossil fuels na ginagamit natin to produce different kinds of oils and kerosenes. Pero at what cost? Sabi ko nga, uh, it produces a lot of harmful gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane. So this actually leads to other problems like pagkakaroon ng acid rain, 
And, uh, you know, in other countries, in other parts of the world, like in China, nagkakaroon sila ng mga smogs, no? a combination of fog and smoke. And uh, I had a student before when I was teaching online, um, they say, and they were telling me, na kapag nagkaroon ng matinding smog sa kanila, ay lahat sila mag-work from home and they will not go out kasi talagang napakadelikado. And, and maraming mga tao ang namamatay at nagkakasakit because of the smog. And they have to wear yung mga makakapal na or different kinds of masks. No? Hindi pwede yung mga uh, nakikita lang natin na ordinary masks. So, uh, grabe yung nagiging problema no? sa pollution and contamination. Contamination, example dito, yung paggamit ng mga iba't ibang klase ng insecticides and pesticides sa lupa which actually causes the deterioration of the soil quality. And because of this, no, apektado din pati yung ating mga pagkain, yung mga pananim, kumukonte, and, and uh, mas marami yung napuproducin na iba't ibang klase no, ng mga pests because of the uh, adaptation of these insects to these particular chemicals. And uh, of course, stronger insects would mean stronger pesticides and whatnot. Kaya overall, all of these lead to uh, the greatest problem that we have right now, which is global climate. Okay, global climate change. Um, grabe ang init. Grabe ang mga bagyo. In fact, no, yung mga thunderstorm natin ngayon was actually considered to be uh, a typhoon on our uh, back when I was when we were still young, no. Yung mga signal number, yung mga thunderstorm natin nasa signal number two or three na namin noon. Pero ngayon it's an ordinary thunderstorm. Kabag it's just branded as thunderstorm. Pakikita nyo din, grabe yung mga pagbaha kasi uh, natutunaw na nga yung yelo no, sa Antarctic Ocean. Tumataas yung sea level. You know, there are many parts of our country like the Gupan City that is already below sea level. Kaya nga kapag konting ulan, konting uh, magdagkaroon ng thunderstorm, lubog na ang Dagupan City. And uh, makikita, ayawang ko kung nakabisita na kayo sa Dagupan City ngayon, pero uh, meron doong portion, kung makikita ninyo, yung drainage na ginagawa nila ay kasing taas ng tao. No? Uh, and in fact, sa akin, parang nasa dibdib ko ata yung taas niya. And they were saying na uh, yung taas na yon ay magiging level na ng, ng daan. So, kay, walang choice ang maraming mga buildings or maraming mga naninirahan doon kundi itaas din no, yung, yung kanilang mga kabahayan. And... Uh, Kumbaga, this, if this continues, kapag patuloy natin nasisira ang ating uh, environment, ang ating ecosystem, then uh, we can expect greater consequences and uh, uh, greater casualties uh, on our part. Now, as I've mentioned earlier, in order to protect our environment, our biodiversity, the United Nations created protocols you know, on biodiversity. And one of these protocols is actually the Montreal Protocol. Now, the Montreal Protocol, finalized in 1987, is a global agreement to protect the stratos, uh, stratospheric ozone layer, or simply just the ozone layer. Okay? The main purpose of the Montreal Protocol is to help our ozone layer recover and to protect our ozone layer. Okay? Uh, saan ba pinoprotektahan ng Montreal Protocol ang ating ozone layer? This is uh, phasing out, out, uh, phasing out, of the production and consumption of ozone depleting substances or what we call the ODS. Ano ba mga examples ng mga ODS na meron tayo? Okay? What are the examples of these ODS? Okay? Ito yung mga usual na kikita natin sa refrigerators, air conditioners, fire, ext fire extinguishers, and aerosols. I don't know if you have heard about CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. Those are examples of ozone depleting substances. Kaya nga, Pinagbawal yan sa mga refrigerators, air conditions, aerosols, and fire extinguishers. Again, the main purpose of the Montreal Protocol is to protect the ozone layer and help it recover. Now, according to the recent news in Nairobi, in Japan, January 9, 2023, they were saying na uh, nagkaroon na no, ng pagbabago at nag-recover na ang ating ozone layer, uh, helping avoid global uh, increase in global temperature of 0.5 degrees centigrade. Well, that's good news. Pero, uh, napakatagal ng recovery ng ating ozone layer. And how much uh, carbon dioxide, how much uh, harmful gases do we produce every day? 
So unless they change and do something about this, uh, uh, this uh, unhealthy production of these harmful gases, then uh, I don't think we can completely recover our ozone layers. Okay? Now, <clears throat> next one is, uh, by the way, uh, I have a, a, a question to you guys uh, about the Montreal Protocol in relation to Montreal Protocol. Okay? Um, I'm pretty sure you've heard about the harmful gases, tama? Yung mga iba ibang uh, harmful or greenhouse gases that contributes to the depletion of our ozone layer. Okay, please take note of this. The the of all the greenhouse gases, ang pinakamarami na produce is actually water vapor. Yes, you've heard me right. The water vapor ang nagkukos or or a major contributor sa pag-init or pag-trap no ng pag pagtaas ng temperature sa ating atmosphere now remember this greenhouse gases actually serves as a barrier na instead na makalabas yung yung init no sa ating atmosphere natatrap ito so instead na uh, lumabas no yung mainit na temperature na yon nagba-bounce back siya pabalik sa atin and this actually leads to the melting of the ice and of course increased temperature so ano yung most prevalent uh, greenhouse gas the answer is green uh, the answer is water vapor all right now for the kyoto protocol this is actually an international treaty which extends the 1992 united nations framework convention on climate change so in short the kyoto protocol operationalizes the united nations framework convention on climate change by committing industrialized countries and economies in transition to limit and reduce the greenhouse gases. Earlier, I've mentioned about the greenhouse gases. Ulitin ko ha, Montreal Protocol protects and recovers our ozone layer. Now, pag Kyoto Protocol, ang focus naman niya ay reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. And I've mentioned that the most prevalent or yung pinakamarami na greenhouse gas found in our ecosystem or our atmosphere is actually the water vapor. Okay. Now, um, the Kyoto Protocol was an international agreement that called for industrialized nations to actually reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, particularly yung mga human-made carbon dioxide emissions. And uh, I've mentioned some examples of these gases earlier. Okay. Last one is the Cartagena Protocol. The Cartagena Protocol is an international agreement managing the movement of living modified organisms. Remember, we have the GMOs or genetically modified organisms. Don't worry, that will be explained on a separate topic because we have uh, another discussion for the genetically modified organisms. Okay. Ano ang aim ng Cartagena Protocol? It aims to protect nature from the potential risks posed by such organisms by establishing procedures in many countries which actually used it. And of course, uh, the public should be informed whether certain food or certain product is actually GMO. Kaya makikita nyo sa, sa ano ba tawag, packaging no? ng mga products na ito that there are GMOs or genetically modified organisms, so that you'll be given, um, you'll be given uh, the right, the freedom, whether to choose to consume it or choose to not consume it. Okay, so that's the Cartagena Protocol. Ulitin ko, Montreal Protocol focuses on the ozone layer. Kyoto Protocol reduces the emission of harmful greenhouse gases, and of course, the Cartagena Protocol, which actually limits or which actually uh, manage the movement of living modified organism or genetically modified organism. All right. So that's all for our topic, biodiversity and healthy society. You know, we only have one planet. We only have one Earth. It is our responsibility to protect and care for it. Um, tayo din ang magsasuffer, tayo din ang mahihirapan. You know, yung mga simpleng bagay tulad ng tamang pagtapon ng basura or less consumption of plastics, this actually creates a massive impact to our environment. More so, you know, yung uh, pagkontrol din ng ating population, education is a must. We need to be educated. And of course, the next generation should be educated and should be involved 
in protecting our biodiversity. So mahalin natin ang ating uh, ang ating nag-iisang planet and uh, let's all do our part in protecting and taking care of our biodiversity. So thank you very much for listening. I'll see you in our next topic. Bye-bye.